Hey there, I'm Robin from Fuse Sales, the secure point of sale platform for WooCommerce. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about barcodes and barcode scanners when using Fuse Sales. I've set up a blog post that covers all the topics we're going to discuss. And I'm going to go through each one of those topics and give you a bit more detail so that you have a solid understanding of how to use barcodes with Fuse Sales and speed up the checkout process. So let's head over to fuesales.com forward slash blog and open up the barcodes blog post. So in this blog post, we have different sections that cover all the intricacies of using barcodes with few cells. And we start off really simple. What is a barcode and barcode scanner? We then look at how to connect your device to your computer or to your iPad, um, how to configure it, uh, how to enable Bluetooth mode within the apps, scanning products in few cells, using the built-in camera, and then we've got a few extra pro tips um, that'll just help you with common things people uh, do come across. So first is, you know, what is a barcode? Um, it's essentially a graphic, an image, uh, that includes a series of black lines or black and white lines. And these lines, depending on the widths, represent different numbers. So if we look at the examples over here, you'll see the number one is represented by these lines, and then you'll see number two is represented by lines of slightly different widths and spaces between them. Same for number three and same for the number one, two, three. And the reason we use these is it's very easy for a device such as a barcode scanner to capture the image, which is just plain lines, and look at the spaces between those lines or the widths of the lines to determine which number they um, relate to. If we had to scan a more complicated graphic like numbers or, or letters, it's quite difficult for the device to decipher that and figure out what numbers it's actually looking at. So barcodes are just a very simplified way of looking at numbers. Um, and you know the idea is that when you when you scan barcodes, it reduces the likelihood of error. You know, so they need to be really robust and they need to be really easy to scan, so that it speeds up your checkout process and you know it doesn't make it longer. So barcodes essentially just graphics that represent numbers, and then the barcode scanner is just a device for capturing that number. So how they work is they first shine red light onto the area they want to scan. And then it has a little scanner or receiver that essentially takes a picture of that area and takes that picture and turns it into an analog format, um, which is essentially just uh, figuring out the spaces, uh, you know, uh, representing them with uh, no, uh, numbers. And then it matches that to uh, the number that the barcode represents. So, you know, it's matching this shape essentially to this number and so on and so on. So inside there's a fancy little camera and a, a mechanism for decoding the image. From your perspective, all this really is, is um, a fancy keyboard that instead of you having to type it out, uh, type a number out, it's doing it for you. It's using the little camera to capture the, the number. And then it's sending that number to your computer or your iPad exactly in the same way as a keyboard does. This is ultimately just an input device. And um, you know, if you open up Notepad or a text, uh, a text editor and you scan a barcode once this is connected to your computer, it'll just send a text number exactly as if you typed it out. So it's, it's you know, quite fancy in how it captures a number, but from there, when it actually sends the number, it's no different to a keyboard. It's just a plain old input device. And you know, we've got two different types here. One is a wired version, one's a Bluetooth version. It's exactly the same as having a wired keyboard or Bluetooth keyboard sending numbers to your computer. So um, demystifying them, they basically, you know, the same as a keyboard. They're just an input device. So when you do connect it, um, like I said, you have a USB option. So this one, you know, out of the box that, that it came uh, from uh, when, when I received it, I plugged it into my computer and it worked instantly. Able to scan uh, numbers or scan barcodes and the number sent to my device if I opened up Notepad and I scanned a, num I scanned a barcode, the number would display in Notepad. So very easy to use, very simple. Uh, this one didn't require configuration, but they do sometimes. And we'll, we'll go into that a bit more detail in the next section. Um, and then the Bluetooth one is, it's pretty much like a Bluetooth speaker. It's just a Bluetooth device. So when you connect it, you go to your Bluetooth settings. Um, this is an example of connecting it uh, on an iPad. You go to settings, Bluetooth, and it should show up in this list. And you simply connect it the same way you would a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth keyboard or any other Bluetooth device. And once you've connected it, uh, you can test if it's connected successfully 
by opening up Notepad and scanning any barcode. You can take you know something out of the, the kitchen cupboard and scan it, and it should show the, the appropriate number over here. So at this point, we haven't even touched few cells. You don't even have to have the few cells uh, apps installed. This is really just an input device. And the first step is to make sure you can connect it. And once you've connected it via Bluetooth or, or wired one, if you're on desktop, um, scan a barcode and make sure that you're able to actually see the number that the barcode represents. So next is uh, if you do scan the barcode and the number is incorrect, it might be that you need to configure the barcode scanner. And to do that, it's a little bit different to, to most devices. Um, the reason being is this doesn't have a fancy touch screen where you, know, you can go through menus and set it. So it needs to use the only input source it has, and that's actual scanning of a barcode. So, because remember, if you scan a barcode, it sends a number to the device. So most barcode scanners come with a sheet that looks similar to this, and it'll have an option that says enable setup mode. And you scan it, and it'll make a beep noise. This one makes a double beep noise. And that means it's in setup mode. And then you scan the settings that you want to apply to the barcode scanner. So for example, if you want to mute it, you don't want sounds. Um, this one over here has a sound off option. I would scan that barcode and this would then stop making sound. And for most of the settings, uh, they, they're pretty straightforward, like these sound ones. But sometimes you might need to change a, a factory setting. So it might come uh, set up to use a strange encoding format. And what you want to do is make sure that it uses code 128. Um, so if, if it doesn't use code 128, so if it doesn't work perfectly out of the box, check your sheet and look for an option that uh, lets you set it to code 128. Next is you want to make sure it doesn't add any funny characters or line returns. So line return is if you scan a number and in Notepad, um, it automatically moves the cursor to the next line. That next line, there's actually an invisible character that's sent there, and that could confuse the FuSales apps. Um, I must say the later versions of the FuSales apps, more recent ones, we actually do cater for this. So it's not likely to be an issue, but if you do have trouble, you, you know that's the option you need to look for. And then the last option is language. So if you scan, um, if your scan is set to a different language to yours, it use, perhaps uses different characters, and you scan a barcode, it's gonna send the barcode numbers back in that language. And that might not match up with your language. So make sure that it's set to English or at least a very similar language so that the characters do actually match up. And that's it for, for configuration. This does change depending on the manufacturer. And you know, all the barcode scanners I've received so far, uh, they've just worked out of the box correctly. But if it's not doing exactly what you expect it to do, you know, look at your look at your setup sheet and look at the settings and try and make sure that uh, you get it uh, as close as possible to the recommended settings, which is essentially just code 128, uh, you know, set it to 2D barcode scanning um, and make sure that your language is correct. Those are the main ones. Then moving on to the apps. Uh, so the apps don't... Uh, talk to the barcode scanners. They just receive the text input. You know, like I said, they, these things are pretty much just keyboard sending text, but they do need to know that they need to listen for this input. And by that, I mean, is if I type, if I send a number with this device um, and I don't have the cursor set anywhere, uh, it's not going to do anything. You know, although the number's received, it doesn't know, your, the application doesn't know what to do with it. So you need to enable Bluetooth mode then the app's going to know to listen for that type of input. So it's just going to be aware that there is a Bluetooth scanner that it needs to listen to. And to do that's really easy. You open up the app uh, on iOS or Android. You click the barcode button. That'll open up the built-in camera, which you can also use to scan, uh, scan barcodes. And then you just got to select the Bluetooth icon over there. And that will enable the Bluetooth mode, and it just means it's going to be listening for your scanner. So then when you do scan a product, if it finds it, it's automatically going to add it to your cart and uh, you're good to go. If you're using the web version, a uh, very similar process, you just have to check that. And that just lets us know that it needs to use the barcode scanner's value, exactly the same as the apps. It doesn't actually talk to the barcode scanner, it doesn't do anything fancy in the background. It's just putting it in a mode where it says, okay, if something is scanned, use that value to, to run a search and find the product. Then down to scanning products. So now we've connected uh, a scanner, we've configured it correctly, and we've enabled Bluetooth mode uh, so that the app knows it needs to, to listen for it. Now what it does is it takes the number that you scan, 
So if you've got a product with a barcode on it, that barcode represents a number. So this one, for example, is 124. Um, it's then going to run a search in the background, and it's going to look for any product that has the ID or the SKU matching that number. So in the screenshot over here, the barcode represents 833, and this product's SKU is 833. If the product's ID was 833, it would have found it. If we scan a product with the ID of 4688, it would find this. Um, but the reason we do both is, you know, in WooCommerce, you can't modify the ID of the product, but you can modify the SKU. So if, for example, your product already has a barcode on it and you want to use that barcode, and it could be a long, obscure number, you can go into WooCommerce, go to the product, edit the SKU value, which is in your data uh, options in, when editing the product, and you just enter the number that that barcode represents. The number is normally written at the bottom of the barcode. Then when you scan that barcode, that number will be sent to the Few Sales app and it'll find that product because the SKU matches that barcode. Um, that's also, you know, in, in terms of printing barcodes, uh, it's important because, you know, there's two ways you could go about it. You could use a third-party plugin or, or web service for printing uh, WooCommerce barcodes. And by that, I mean barcodes that reflect the SKU or the product IDs of your inventory or you can just print generic barcodes with their own numbers and then edit each product to match those numbers on those barcodes. So it depends what you have available to you or what your preference is. Um, but the main thing is if, you, if you're using custom barcode numbers, you'll need to modify the SKU of the products in WooCommerce to match those barcodes. Then lastly, uh, just a reminder that you can use the built-in camera if you're using iOS or Android. So... This works exactly the same as the barcode scanner, except you don't need to connect anything and you don't need to configure anything. It'll work off the bat. And it's a good way also to test if the values being scanned match what's on your, uh, what your barcode scanner is uh, receiving. And if they don't, then you know your barcode scanner is probably not configured correctly. So that's a, that's a handy tool just to make sure. And then the last section is pro tips. So these are just things you need to kind of look out for and they, they're things you can do to improve the quality of your scanning. And the first one is uh, we recommend using QR codes or 2D barcodes. You can use 1D barcodes, but generally QR and 2D barcodes are a bit more reliable. When you do print barcodes, print them as large as you can. The reason being is, you know, this needs to scan the image. So the bigger the image, the easier it is for it to pick it up. If it's tiny and the spaces are really small, it's very possible that this could get confused because it's hard to read exactly the same for a human, if uh, text is written out really small or numbers are written out really small, it's kind of hard to figure out what the numbers are and these devices are no different. The next is ensure lighting and contrast is good. So if you're in a low light environment, it's hard for the scanner to pick up um, pick up the barcode, exactly as if you were reading text. If, if it's dark, you're going to struggle to read what, what's written down. So make sure it's well, uh, well lit and that the barcodes are decent size and uh, you shouldn't have any troubles. And the last one is, uh, you know, if you have a lot of barcodes in a small area, the barcode scanner might get confused which, which barcode to scan. So make sure that there's, you know, a decent space around the barcode so that not more than one is picked up at a time. If they are close together and you don't have a choice, try and get a bit closer with actual barcode scanner. And that's likely, uh, more likely that it'll hone in on that specific one. But in general, we'll say, uh, I'd say try and keep a bit of space um, around them. And that's it. That covers everything you pretty much need to know about uh, barcode scanners using few cells. If you do have any questions or if, uh, if you do get stuck or come across any issues that aren't covered here, head over to our help center where we have additional resources and you can also contact us there and we'll help uh, figure out any issues that you might have. Thanks for watching.